I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about touch events, font downloads, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a project called Touchy. Now, this is not talking about Nick and mine's emotional state. This is a jQuery plugin for handling different touch events on mobile devices. Now, if we go ahead and look at the web page here, we can see that what this does is a plugin that exposes event data like velocity for these different kinds of events long press, drag, pinch, rotate, and swipe. Uh, now, you can use this to prevent a conflict between a drag and a swipe. And the most useful part is that you get the pinch event abstracted across Android and iOS devices. Now, we can go ahead and look at the code here on GitHub. And you can see it's very easy to use. Just drop jQuery and touchy into your page. And then you can go ahead and set this all up into a function. And we can see we grab this div and we bind to the event touchy dash pinch if we want to bind to the pinch event and then we send in the function that we want which in this case is to apply a CSS transformation that scales and uh, actually in this case just scales the target. Now the events that are supported are the long press, drag, pinch, rotate, and swipe and you get all sorts of data passed in to the different event handlers. Uh, the event comes in as an object. Um, the phase, which is the start, move, or end of the gesture, and you can, of course, uh, perform different functions at each of these different points. And also the target, which is a jQuery object wrapping the event target. Some of these also support additional information about the gesture. Now, you get different options for each of the different events. Uh, and this is just very, very nice to use. And you can also find things like required touches, which is how many touches it's going to take until the event actually fires. Anyway, this is a great plugin to use if you need to detect these events. So go ahead and check it out in the show notes right below the video here. Very nice stuff. Well, next up, we have a great blog post about how to minimize font downloads. And I'll there's good news and bad news here. I'll tell you the good news first. You just click a little button on the window, right? No. Minimize, not, minimize while the fonts are downloaded. Not, not at all. That's not how that works. Not talking about the window? Fonts can be big. Fonts can take up maybe 300 kilobytes sometimes. And if you have a bunch of fonts, that can add up pretty quickly to multiple megabytes on a website. However, there is a way to let the browser deal with these larger fonts. And you'll notice here in this font face CSS, we have this little property here called Unicode range. What? So what does that do? Well, it tells the browser that when it gets this font to only download this range of Unicode characters. So for example, that could be the Unicode range U plus zero to A zero, and that's going to be basic letters, numbers, and punctuation. And if you actually need more stuff, you can include this extended version, which is basically the rest of them. And the browser will be smart enough to only grab the subsets that it actually needs. So if you don't need these other characters, it won't actually even download them. And that's going to result in much smaller downloads. Now, I said there was bad news. Well, I'm ready. The bad news is browser support, as you probably guessed is not that great. There's Safari, which downloads all the fonts, Internet Explorer, which downloads all the fonts, Firefox, which is kind of broken in some ways. Chrome actually does the right thing. It downloads only fonts that you need, and then Opera is also good as well. So if you want this to actually work in your browser, you should go to the browser vendors and push for it to be fixed. There's links here to the bug reports for Safari and Internet Explorer, and you can tell them, hey, this is something that's important to me, and I'd like you to work on this over other things first. I, so, hope, they don't, I, hope, I hope they don't think you're too touchy if you do that. You know, like if they say no. I, I got what you're saying. Anyway. Because uh, that was the first project we covered. 
That is the joke. One way you can make your your fonts smaller in in Chrome, at least. At least for now, until the browser vendors support it, based on all of our feedback. So just whine and complain enough, and it could happen. <laughs> you could get what you want. Yeah, that's a that's a really good message to send to to the people. Yep. Next up, we have a project called Touch Swipe. This is a jQuery plugin for touch devices. Now, this is a little bit different than Touchy in that it is used mainly for swiping. Now, this detects swipes in four different directions, up, down, left, and right. Uh, this also detects pinches, but really, you're going to be wanting to detect the swipes. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the demo right here. Uh, you'll see this is it says swipe me in this div here and I can just kind of grab it click with the mouse and it tells me that I swiped left wow it's a uh, it's great work for today Jason you're pretty much done no but uh, what's really nice about this is this will tell you all sorts of different things about what is going on with the status of your swipes so you can handle it uh, you'll see I just started swiping it shows the different phase that we're in, uh, the direction, which is left, and the duration, which is increasing as I go along here. And it will also tell you the distance. So you can set thresholds here. You can see over max time threshold. Say, all right, well, somebody is swiping a little bit too long now. I'd like to cancel the event that I was going to do because they got distracted or something. And there's also a handler, handler that you can trigger once you reach the different threshold. Anyway, there are a lot of different options in this plugin. It's a great plugin. You might want to use this in case you need to do more complicated swipes that Touchy doesn't support. Anyway, check it out in the show notes, which are right below the video. Very nice stuff. Well, next up is this wonderful blog post called iOS 8 and iPhone 6 for Web Developers and Designers, Next Evolution for Safari and Native Web Apps. That's a really long title, but it's also a really long blog post blog post. I'm scrolling down here. Look at this little this little scroll bar over here. Look wow. at how long this post is. But I'm gonna go get a book while it, we read this post. Uh, it basically is a book. It's a it's a great post though. Small book. All about uh, iOS 8 and iPhone 6 and basically what it means for uh, people like you and me, web designers and web developers. There's a couple of new HTML5 APIs, particularly or one that I'm particularly excited about is WebGL. It's supported in iOS 8. So you can now do really cool 3D graphics directly in a mobile web browser. It is the future. You can also do the navigation timing API, which allows you to get much more precise timing than you could in the past. There's also IndexedDB. It's pretty cool. Bunch of cool stuff here. It starts out with a couple of stats on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus and tells you exactly the viewport's device width in CSS pixels, different than actual pixels, because, of course, these are some pretty high-resolution devices, as you can see down here. But here are the CSS pixels, and that's really important to know if you're dealing in absolute values in your CSS. It I don't also, think you're supposed to deal in absolutes, right? Uh, is that the Sith? I think that's the, the Sith, actually. Yeah, huh. they deal in absolutes. Not web pages. Okay. Nope. Got it. Nope. Different topic. Uh, here, <clears throat> here is the site MediaQueryTest.com, and it tells you a bunch of stats, and this is, of course, rendered in iOS 8, and it tells you all sorts of useful bits of information if you're building a responsive site, which of course you probably should be. Very cool stuff. Anyway, there's a lot more detail in this post. Uh, again, said that iOS 8 supports WebGL. There's a little screenshot of the Fish GL example running on iOS 8. Pretty cool to check out if you haven't done so already. But anyway, there's lots more stuff in this post. Not going to get into all of it. But definitely be sure to check this out because, of course, the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus are pretty popular phones, and it's important to support them. Yeah, they're, they're not going away. Nope. Next up, we have a blog post for a web components punch list. Now, if you are developing sites and using web components, good for you. Web components are 
kind of a, a big deal and something that you should be prepared to use. We've talked about that on the show before, so we're not going to totally get into it right now. But there is a really nice punch list here that you should keep in mind when you are developing web components. Now, um, this is really important if you're developing applications. Now, here's some of the things that you should keep in mind. Is the web component focusable? Can you get control of it from the keyboard? Is uh, JSON focusable? I don't think he is focusable at all. What were we talking about? Next up, is the element operable? Can you use the control with the keyboard? Again, these are both things that are going to be very important when you are developing rich internet applications. And actually, they take note of the ARIA design patterns. ARIA is the uh, Accessible Rich Internet Application Design Guidelines. Good job. Anyway. All of these different attributes are things you should keep in mind because websites need to be accessibility. Um, why do they need to be accessible? Well, so people can use them. Anyway, go ahead, take a look at this checklist. We'll have a link to that in the show notes right below the video. And that is all we have time for this week. Nick, who are you on Twitter? I am at NickRP. And I am at Jay Cipher. It's been nice talking to you, and we will talk to you next week. I'm Nick Pettit. <laughs> Do you need me to start the game? <laughs> I'm Nick Pettit. Experts. <laughs>